parts one to four, we covered tents, camper trailers, caravans and motorhomes. In this last episode, we're going to look at some of the associated issues that you might want to consider and draw some conclusions from our own experiences. First of all, let's have a look at some of the different methods of towing a second vehicle. When we were using the big bus, a second vehicle was an absolute necessity. We had to find work as we travelled. And once the bus was parked up somewhere, we didn't want to use it to either go exploring or get supplies or whatever. Whether you need a second vehicle will depend to a great extent on the size of your motorhome, and we think anything over 24 feet is going to be a problem if you want to get around as a daily driver. Our experience with one vehicle setups have been with the Toyota Coasters. This would have been fine if we were just doing stop-start travelling, but when you want to stay in one place for a while, having to pack everything up every time you want to go into town is an enormous hassle. Your choice of a second vehicle could be anything from an electric scooter to a moped, a push bike, even up to a big 4x4. But we would say that having a second vehicle is not just a luxury, it's a must for many people. There are three main ways to transport a second vehicle. The first is by normal trailer, and this is what we did. Unfortunately we picked the wrong trailer. It was a bit too lightweight for what we wanted, and even though we were only towing a barina, it really didn't stand up to the rigours of unsealed roads. A good trailer should have light truck tyres and some form of electric braking system. The main problem with the trailer is it's going to cost you extra to ensure, license and maintain. It does stop the odometer whizzing round on the car as it would if you were A-framing. But it has all the extra weight and expense. Is it really worth it? Well, having been around Australia with this kind of setup, we think we would have liked to have done it a different way if we had a chance to do it all again. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Most people we have seen with a second car have it on top of a tandem trailer. There is another smaller trailer that you can use, and it's either called a car caddy or a car dolly. In this case, either the front or the back wheels go up onto the dolly, while the other pair of wheels stay on the road. There are legal issues associated with both car dollies and A-framing, and you'll need to check those out with your local authorities. Car dollies are usually made for towing light vehicles only. Rules for towing trailers are still not uniform across Australia, so as you enter a new state, you will need to become familiar with the differences in any regulations. If you're towing a trailer in WA, for example, the maximum speed limit is 100 kilometres an hour. The second method of towing, and one that quite a lot of people use, is A-framing. An A-frame is a device that's attached to the front of the car. Usually you need some kind of chassis to attach it to, so not all cars are going to be suitable. It means the car is flat-toed, and again, there are different rules and regulations for each state regarding this method of towing. You'll have to look into those before you set up an A-frame. The final method is probably one that's most complex to set up, but most simple to use and it's really only feasible for buses and trucks. That is to actually have the second vehicle inside the main vehicle. This method generally allows greater speed and greater manoeuvrability. It does limit the size of your second vehicle though. This next section deals with what choices we have made over time and how they've changed. When we wanted to work our way around Australia, we decided that we wanted a vehicle that could carry a lot of gear and was going to be big enough to be comfortable living in over a long period of time. Being rather green at the start, we really had no idea what types of motorhome were available, but we quickly ruled out towing a caravan, as we thought our budget of about $20,000 would not stretch to a caravan and the 4x4 that would be required to tow it. We also believed, somewhat mistakenly, that a caravan big enough to be comfortable was going to be too big to tow, but more on that later. With a limited budget, we looked around at converted buses and ended up purchasing a 1962 30-foot Bedford with a petrol gas engine. The price was around $16,000, 
but as we found out later, old buses are hard to fix because of the scarcity of parts, and they do tend to break down rather a lot. We bought our car trailer that turned out to be too lightweight and put our old barina on it as we didn't have enough money to buy a small 4x4. In the end, we travelled and worked our way around in the bus for five years before it became just too expensive to drive and repair. We still miss the old bus as it could carry as much gear as we wanted and it was very comfortable to live in. Nothing we've had since has been quite as good for long-term living. We had to make the choice between putting more money into the bus, which by that time had soaked up about $34,000, including the purchase price, or moving on to a completely new setup. When we retired the bus, we purchased a camper van. This was a huge mistake, as you really can't take very much gear in one of those small vehicles. We tried to alleviate the problem by putting a small trailer on the back. If the engine of the camper van had been bigger, this would have been a slightly better alternative, but it was never going to work for us long term. For us, camper vans are just too small to be a serious way of living long term on the road. Even though we've met a few people who have spent months at a time in a camper van, we now regard them as suitable only for long weekends or a month away at the very outside. Next, we found a very cheap short wheelbase Toyota Coaster. This was bigger in every way than the camper van, and even had an internal shower. We did a fair bit of work on it to get it the way we wanted, and then we took off up north for three months, towing a trailer behind. The Coaster had good storage space, and with the trailer behind, we could pack all the gear we wanted and take the boat as well. But we had no boat trailer, and it was not easy to launch the boat by hand. We could pack all the gear we wanted and take the boat as well. But what could we do to launch the boat? We certainly didn't want to take the annex down every time we went fishing. In the end, we had to limit our choices of campsites to ones where we could camp pretty close to the boat ramp and launch the boat by hand. The coaster also had a bed placed across the vehicle, what they call east-west. So the width inside the vehicle meant that space was limited, and even though I'm only about 5'7", anyone taller would have had a very hard time sleeping in that bed. After three months of packing up camp every time we wanted to go into town, we came home and thought about how we could resolve this problem without towing a car. The coaster was big enough to go away in for a reasonable length of time, and small enough to take to the local shopping centre. But we didn't like packing up camp every time we wanted to go somewhere. We ended up buying a 14-foot caravan to tow behind, and we set off on another trip. To start with, this seemed like it would work well, but we soon started having mechanical problems associated with a big engine and a small clutch. The coaster happened to be a hybrid with a 4-litre Falcon engine, but it also had the original Toyota clutch designed only for a 2-litre engine. This had been fine when we weren't towing, but as soon as we started towing, we started to have problems with the clutch. This, combined with the fact that we couldn't think of any way of carrying a boat with this rig, put us off the whole idea, and we started looking around again for a new solution. In the end, we sold the coaster, and bought an old Land Cruiser to tow the caravan. We had by this time turned full circle, and ended up with a rig that we dismissed very early on. After two years and quite a lot of time in the small 14-foot caravan, we decided that a bit more room might not be a bad idea. A 14-foot van is small, and looking at the bigger vans on offer, we thought that something in the range of 18 feet with tandem wheels would do. In the end, the van we bought was 20 feet long, and we were happy with the choice, but the poor old Land Cruiser had a lot of work to do dragging it around. It was one of the older vans, and consequently was built like the proverbial brick dunny, not like the flimsy things they build today. We kept the 20-foot van until we decided to move back to a more sedentary life. During the years we used it, we found that it was almost as good as our old Bedford bus to live in. 
There really is no substitute for a big bus for long-term living, but a big caravan can be almost as comfortable, even if you can't carry as much gear with you. We no longer had the space to keep the big van, so we decided to change to something easier to store and tow. The next rig was a Jayco Swan Outback, a cross between a caravan and a camper trailer. For a while, we kept the old Land Cruiser, and we went away several times with this. It was a good combination in dry weather, but wet weather really caused trouble when it was time to pack up and move. When the old Land Cruiser started to rust away, we changed the tow vehicle to a Prado, and this turned out to be a good combination. We did quite a few trips in this combination, but the difficulties of moving the Jayco around on grass in the backyard and the hassles with wet weather made us start to reconsider our options yet again. The Jayco was actually a lot of fun in the right weather, and once it was set up, there was almost as much room inside as the big caravan, and it was quite comfortable. Sadly, it suffered from all the negative aspects of any canvas-covered camper. Next came another Toyota Coaster motorhome. We teamed this up with a small lock-up trailer, but the Coaster was quite old, 1988, and has had a large number of mechanical issues to resolve. This has been frustrating and expensive. But even so, six years later, we're still going away with it several times a year. It's a great rig for stop-start travelling, but less useful if we want to stop somewhere for a long time. For a short time, we also owned a soft-floor camper trailer, at the same time as we had the coaster. The trailer was used to go places where the coaster just wouldn't go. The camper was good when it was set up, and had tons of room with the external annex erected, but again, Canvas is a fine way of the choice, and when the wet weather hit, as it always seems to, it lost most of its charm. The camper trailer was also tiresome to set up and pack away. It usually took several hours, and was completely useless for stop-start travelling. A hard floor camper, or forward fold one, would have been a much better choice. So in the end, we sold the camper, and moved on to a homemade camping trailer that I fitted out myself. We still had the coaster, but I wanted something simple to take away with the four-wheel drive. So I purchased a bare-bones covered trailer and set about converting it. The rig we ended up with was easy enough to set up and pack up, and gave a decent amount of space and could follow the 4x4 to most places we wanted to go. So right now, we have two rigs. The coaster for trips that involve a lot of exploration and moving on almost every day, and the homemade camping trailer that can be used for more remote areas and to stay longer in one place. This is set to change again at some point in the future, as we want to go back to just one rig that will do almost everything, and that will mean a return to a 4x4 and caravan combination. So that is the end of our thoughts on different types of rigs. I hope over this series you may have found something interesting or something useful that uh, gives you pause for thought if you're thinking about buying a setup or thinking about changing to a new one. Thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you back here again next week for our more usual type of videos. Cheers for now. Catch you later. Bye.